Hello everyone, it's Neil here from 3D Tutor, back today with another amazing geometry node, and this time we're looking at cobblestones. So what if I told you in a few short clicks you could have something like this, or this, or this, or even this? Well then stay tuned because I'm going to show you just how easy it is to use this new geometry node, and within, as promised, one click. So when you first download this geometry node, this is what you're going to get. You're going to get a few examples here. And of course, you're going to actually get the materials that we actually used within this uh, geometry node. You, of course, can add in your own materials. I will show you how to do that just in a minute. But first of all, let's just go back and show you how easy it is to use. So what I'm going to do is, first of all, I'm going to bring in a plane. I'm actually, first of all, going to move these over to the left hand side. Bring in a plane, so shift A, bring in a plane. Let's make it a little bit bigger, like so. Let's press Control A or Transforms, set the origin to geometry, and then, like I promised, the one click guide. So, all we do is add modifier, come over to geometry node, click the down arrow, and cobblestones. And there we go. It's as simple as that. Now, that's not all there is to it, of course. We can do a lot of things with this. So first of all, let's go through a few of the options so you'll find it easy to use. And then a little bit later on, I'll show you what you can actually use it on. So first of all, we've got an option here that says fill edges. And what they'll do is they'll put little tiny um, cobbles around the edges just in case you've got a pathway or something like that where you need the edges actually doing as well. Or maybe you've got a courtyard um, let's move on down then. We've also put in here two amazing materials. I will come back to those in just one second. First of all, let me show you what we can do with this. So first of all, at the moment, we've got a size of kind of like this. We can actually put this up to something like 0.5 and increase the size of those cobblestones. Next of all, then we've got a scale, which will actually scale these so that they're not as close together. So for instance, if I put this on 0.8, like so, you can see now the gap is much, much bigger between those cobblestones. Next of all, then we've also got a roundness button. So we're able to actually make these cobblestones much, much harder or much, much softer, depending on what we actually need. We're also able to change the thickness. So if I put this on 0.08, for instance, we're able to bring that thickness up as well. And as well as that, we've also made it so that you can actually have a thickness randomizer just to make them really, really random if you actually need them. So now let's turn this roundness down a bit so I can show you the next part of this. So what we're also able to do, we've also added this in there, is we're able to change up the noise. So if I put this noise on something like two, Nothing will happen, but the moment I come to the offset power, I can then turn this up and make these cobblestones it crazily uneven if I want to, like so. All with a simple slider. Now let's move back onto the actual materials. So if we come up here and actually put it onto our material view, you will see this is what they've got at the moment. We've also made it so that you can shade smooth or shade hard. Now the moment you actually shade, uh, take shade and smooth off, you will see now we've got all of this beautiful edge wear already incorporated within the actual material. So now what I can do is if I increase this scale up to 0.95, you will see now they all come close together and they look really, really nice, as you can see. Really uneven, lots of variations within the stonework, and more importantly, simple to use. Anyone can use this. All right, so now let's look at what we can actually do with it. How do we actually, or what can we actually use it on? So what I'm gonna do is I'm actually going to come in, I'm actually going to delete this out of the way. So let's now bring in another plane. So shift A, bring in a plane. Let's make it bigger. And all I'm going to do then, I'm just going to go over the top. And basically, I'm going to cut out some kind of random shape. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to grab this, press the K button, then that'll bring in my knife tool. And all I can do then is just cut out some random shape like so. Press the enter button, and now all I want to do is just delete the outside of this. So if I come in, grab this one and this one, press delete and faces. And there we go. We've got our mesh that we want to use. And now I'm going to do is press control A, reset the transforms. Really important you do that if you're using geometry nodes. Add modifier, geometry node, click the down arrow, cobblestone path, and there you go. It actually goes on there. Now, how does this work? 
Well, the thing is, it actually works because it's actually got no geometry in here. So anything you want to use this on, just make sure you've got no geometry. And then what you're going to do is you're going to apply this geometry node. So if I come up, I go to object, come down to convert, convert to mesh. And now you can see we've actually got our geometry node. From there then, if you don't like Engons, or you need to send it through to something like Unreal Engine, you can right click, come down, triangles to faces, right click, tries to quads. And there we go now, we've not actually got an end gone in there. Now what else can we actually use this on is the next question. And how do we take that through then to our other Blender project? So I'll show you both of those at the same time because we do get a lot of people asking us, how do I take this through uh, to another project? So what I'm gonna do is I'm first of all gonna delete this out of the way and then gonna bring in a path. So I'm gonna go to mesh, curve, bring in a path. I'm gonna rotate this path around, so RZ90, pull it out a little bit, and then I'm just going to reset all the transforms. Now I know from first hand that when I come and bring this path out, you will see that if I come down to the extrude button, that it's actually extruding that way. I do know it will do that. So all I'm gonna do is just turn this around quickly. So I'm gonna press R, Y, minus 90, and just put the path like so. Next of all then, let's give this path a little bit of bend. So I'm gonna just go over the top of it. I'm gonna bend it this way. I'm gonna press extrude, extrude, and just bend it like so. And then finally, what I'm gonna do now is I'm going to apply this path. So I'm gonna come down to object, convert, and mesh. Now, before we do anything else, it's important to know, again, this works with engons. In other words, it works without edges in. If I come now to my actual edge, uh, sorry, to my curve that I actually created or pathway, you will see we've got a lot of edges running down here. So how do we get rid of those? All we need to do is we just need to come in, grab the whole thing, press Shift D and just bring it up. Or you can probably come in, grab the whole thing, press Delete and Limited Dissolve. That will also do it, but you can see it's slightly moved this one here. So I don't recommend doing it like that. What I'm gonna do now is I'm going to delete this out of the way. So Delete Vertices, come to this part then, grab it all and instead of doing that just press the f button and then it'll fill it in now the next thing to be aware of if you're doing this is making sure that your normals are pointing the right way if you don't the uh, cobbles are going to be on the underside so how do we fix that next if we come on over to these two interlocking balls come on down you'll see one that says face orientation and you can see these are all blue meaning they're facing the right way. However, this is red, so let's turn that round now. So all I'm gonna do is press tab to go into edit mode, press A to select everything, press shift N, and then just come down to where this little operating panel is here, open it up and just click on the inside. And now everyone, we are ready to go. So let's first of all, turn off our face orientation. And then all I'm gonna do again, I'll reset all my transforms like so, and then I'm gonna add modifier, geometry node, click the little down arrow, and click cobble path and there we go it's as simple as that now what about if we want to change the materials so let's first of all go on over create a new material and all i'm going to do is just put this on something like red something like that and then i'm going to come back now to my path come to where it says uh, stone material we'll change that one you can change the ground as well if you want but all i'm going to do is just click this off click the little down arrow i'm looking for that red material just created and there we go really really easy to change the material now neil how do we actually bring this in then to our own projects if we want to that's also really easy what i recommend doing is you can see that we've got this path here it's got the geometry node on there so all i'm going to do is just press ctrl c copy that so here we are in our new blend file and all i'm going to do is simply drag delete those out of the way press ctrl v and there we go there is our path so now you'll see that if i come on over to the right hand side you can see this has got the geometry node on, which means now it's in this project. It means if I wanna bring in another plane, for instance, and just move it over here. And then what I'll do is I'll just come over, add geometry node and click on my cobblestones. And there you go, it's in your project, ready to use. It really, really is an amazing geometry node, guys. And we will be using it in many of our projects, including our wizard's tower, which we've actually uh, created here. And we added in our cobblestone floor, um, after and you can see if we actually come in then and just put it onto rendered view just how nice this is actually going to turn out so that's it everyone if you like our geometry nodes we have about 20 different geometry nodes at the moment we are working our way up to having 100 by the end of this year so make sure you like and subscribe this if you like it 
and you can find all of our geometry nodes on our YouTube channel or our Gumroad and they'll all have actual links down below where you can get these geometry nodes. If you really like what we do here and you really want to support us, I will put a video to our Patreon, which is one of the best in the industry. So if you please watch that, see what you think of it and see if you want to join our Patreon, that is going to help us out immensely. We don't just want people to pay some money every month and not really get anything for it. We actually give you more than any other Patreon out there. All right, everyone. So I hope you enjoyed that one. I'll play the Patreon video now. Happy modeling, everyone. Cheers. Hey everyone, do you want to have access to hundreds of Blender products every single month? Then check out our brand new Patreon setup, which is probably the best in the industry, especially for beginners to Blender. Best of all, we now have four Patreon levels pretty much for any budget. Or if you just want to follow us over there for the latest news on 3D Tudor, then that's also fine. So let's now take a look at these ranks and stay till the end to find out what we really have to offer. So rank one is all about just supporting us at five euros per month. And this is just to say a big thanks for everything that we do here. Rank two at 10 euros per month comes with a free course every single month. And if you've seen the scenes that we've been creating here on YouTube, where you can get your hands on any of these for absolutely free. And you will get your name featured at the end credits of all of our YouTube videos. Moving on and stepping it up to rank three at 19 euros 50 per month, you get pretty much the same as you did in rank two, but this time we also give you two geometry nodes per month, absolutely free. And moving on to the big one, which is rank four, the top tier that we have at 48 euros 50 per month, and you pretty much get the whole shebang. Two free courses per month, any of our geometry nodes, any of our model packs, any of our YouTube scenes, but best of all, you also get the complete asset manager file, complete with our entire library of compositors, materials, and assets. And this will just keep growing. So whatever your budget, there's never been a better time to support us here at 3D Tudor. And I think we provide one of the best patrons in the industry. So head on over, check out our Patreon, Follow us over there for the latest news, and if you can, we'd be very grateful for any support, large or small.